Chow. Welcome back to Market Sense. Now, the new ARC norms uh, came in three or four days ago. We've done some discussions on those already. But now, today, what we are trying to do is get somebody who would rate some of these uh, these ARC assets or the assets which have been given to ARCs and getting an interested party, Edelweiss, which has got a fairly large uh, ARC division as well. So we get in both of these people together in a single discussion to figure out from both ends as to what these new norms would mean for the industry in the near term and over the medium term. That's the difference that we're trying to create today on Market Sense. Ramraj Pai, President of business head and Business Head of Ratings of Large Corporates at Crisil as well as Sibi Anthony, MD and CEO of Edelweiss ARC, join us right now on the show. Thanks so much for joining in, both of you. Now, Mr. Pai, I'll start off with you because I read your note which you came out with three or four days back. You, in a headline, mentioned that the growth of ARCs over the next 12 months would get restricted to 30%. Why? And what are the key takeaways of the new norms? Yeah. So, uh, so thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I think as we have sort of uh, put together in our uh, note, really, uh, you know, we expect that growth would would come down. Uh, I think uh, several reasons, uh, you know, which we have also highlighted. I think clearly the reason, uh, obviously, is the fact that today uh, ARCs will have to put up uh, visa. We putting up about five percent of, you know, whatever they purchase in the form of cash. They'll have to really put up fifteen percent. So that uh, clearly is going to limit, uh, you know, the, the the capacity of the system to purchase assets. Second, obviously, is the fact that, uh, you know, really they will have to value uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, and their asset management fees will be determined uh, really by uh, the, the NAV and not uh, not really the, the, va- the face value of the SRs, which is also something which is, which is really going to impact, uh, you know, to an extent, at least in the short run earnings. Uh, I think the pricing uh, will, will, will become far more rational so uh, given um, you know these uh, you know two three issues uh, clearly we see that uh, we will enter a phase if I may say of uh, uh, consolidation uh, a phase where ARCs will relook at their business models relook at the kind of assets they are acquiring uh, you know uh, and and clearly in that period uh, you know, look at new sources of financing. I think all of this is really going to lead to some degree of a slowdown uh, in in what uh, will be available uh, and will be purchased by the ERCs. Okay, indeed, uh, it is uh, some points that I would really like to take up then with with Mr. Anthony. But just excuse me for a second while I address some important earnings on the screens. It's been a spectacular quarter for Mother Sumi, and rightly so. The counter is up by five percent. Here's what they have delivered: one twenty four percent jump in the profits at one hundred and sixty four crore rupees, and it's uh, uh, the top line growth too, which has been strong, eighteen percent higher at eight thousand two ninety six. We'll delve into the numbers in just a bit, but five percent higher at three eighty eight for. Mother Sumi, a consistent performer when it comes to earnings. We'd just like to come to you, Mr. Anthony, on the two points that were just flagged off. With respect to, you know, limiting the capacity to purchase assets, how do you see that as an hindrance, as well as the asset management fees now being determined by NAVs? Is that in any way going to impact your earnings, as Mr. Pai stated? Yeah, in fact, uh, the shift from 595 to 85, uh, 1585 structure, uh, there's going to be some impact. But uh, this 595 was a quasi agency business for an ARC. So the downside for its investment of 5% was limited. Now it's becoming more of a capital investment or a capital business. 15% is a substantial investment for an ARC. So 1585, what will really happen is uh, the banks and ARCs will have to have a more rigorous approach on the pricing. So the risk becomes important for an ARC because 15% investment is a large investment for them considering their capital. So, in the shorter term, I believe the uh, your banks will have to adjust themselves to the pricing. Uh, in that way, I agree with Mr. Pai that uh, there will be some reduction in the sales by the banks. But IRCs are here to buy assets. Uh, the good part of it, I, I look this as a very positive uh, move 
by the regulator in the sense that um, internationally bad assets are bought and sold at uh, 30 30 to 35 cents per dollar i think we are moving towards that we are our digital asset market is getting matured to that extent so even uh, when an asset comes to the comes for sale to an arc even we we would need look at the you know whether it should be bought at But 15% or why not to buy total buy out at 30 35% mr anthony the, the we are maturing the market is maturing yeah but the question to, yeah. to that effect is that if indeed the price gets rationalized quite substantially as opposed to what was happening prior to these norms the aum fee yeah. for arcs would come down drastically right because again it's not just on the price it's also on the nav so the actual uh, uh, aum fee would be much much lower than what you companies were enjoying till now no no i would explain that actually uh the price of an asset this is a function of two three variables one is the asset value underlying asset value second is what is the time frame for uh, uh, recovery of this amount if it is two to three years we need to discount that now if the price is right there should not be a hit on the nav nav will remain because the nav is again a function of the price uh, I, now every six months we need to value the asset and declare an nav so if the price is right the nav should be the same 100% so our uh, i don't think there is any impact on that on the the point is uh, the point is mr anthony the, uh, the point is excuse me to interrupt and i would want uh, uh, mr pai to comment on this as well but just that one point wouldn't the price itself yes the nav and the price could well be the same wouldn't the price itself be much lower than what it was prior to these norms coming out much below that's what i initially i said the banks and they are still yeah, yeah, very rigorous pricing on this so then your aum so, total aum growth i agree with mr pai the total aum growth would be a little uh, lower hmm. mr pai so you know just from the perspective of the aum fees as well naturally these would come down right because one that the nav or one that the price of the asset yeah. would be lower it, yeah possibly you guys would uh, ratify it lower than the agreed upon price and therefore the management fees for arcs would be substantially lower than what they were anyways earning before yeah because uh, yeah. so said, i think uh, uh, see there are two elements one is obviously please carry on mr pai yeah, go ahead sir go ahead go ahead mr anthony Yeah. So yeah, I was saying that yes, I I think see there are two issues. One is that if the price is more, if to use a you know a word like realistic or more uh, say you know uh, you know uh, in real terms the more practical kind of price, then our rating will also reflect the ability to recover that uh, lesser value uh, in terms of obviously uh, you know superior rating because obviously what you can recover on hundred visa vis what you can recover on sixty uh, you know is going to be very different. so yes as i think uh, you know you rightly pointed out uh, definitely in the short run it 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 could appear that either fewer asset sales will happen because banks will have to reconcile to a to a to a differential pricing and to that extent obviously if you are going to have lesser assets to that extent uh, the 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 value of what you will have as income is lesser at the same time you will have to remember one more thing however that over a period of time as you are able to recover more maybe and there is a potential upside which could come in the form of you know higher uh, back ended fees as you sort of you know if i may say uh, maybe on 50 rupees of uh, you know what you have purchased for there is a chance for you maybe to recover 60 previously you may have been acquiring it at 80 so yes in the short run mathematically uh, there will be uh, some uh, sort of a reduction is is a possibility but over a longer period of time i think you will create a far more uh, if i may say uh, realistic uh, price based market for these assets uh, i think the focus therefore on earning uh, more will increase uh, definitely within the arc system i think the whole focus on reconstruction which was really you know if i see the arc is really really a lot more about reconstruction i think the focus on that will increase substantially so short run yes there could be some uh, kind of a uh, uh, earnings pressure in the very short run because obviously assets will be purchased at a lower value but i would say given a, you know a, you know a 12 to 24 month time frame i think uh, you know it will we will create a far more uh, structurally resilient uh, business 
Mr. Pai, not uh, you know looking for uh, uh, you know it's not really posing a question, but rather an explanation from you that for these companies now with more cash generation required, won't the AUM growth be further restricted? And what yes, is the it cash will. generation? Yes, it will definitely uh, to that thought. So. The so, so yes, you are you are perfectly right. So basically, the AUM growth will be determined by two factors. One is your ability to put cash on the table. Second is the the readiness of the banking system to also, uh, if I may say, let go of these assets at potentially a value which is somewhat lesser than what they may have been used to, uh, you know, uh, prior uh, to these regulations. So both of these are going to have, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a short run impact, definitely on the AUM of the industry which is exactly what we also tried to cover in our release but I guess over a period of time uh, you know I, I think uh, th th there is also that 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 pressure on the banking system to try and recover money from uh, from the NPAs I think that the, the pressure is high the capital needs of the banking system are increasing and they will obviously use uh, uh, every uh, every possible uh, you know avenue which is available to them to raise finance uh, to really make their balance sheets more efficient and uh, i think uh, we will see some middle path uh, you know uh, emerging uh, definitely over a period of time but in the short run yes definitely there will be some feeling that i was sell selling it at x now i may be having to sell it at a slightly maybe 70% of x or 75% of x that is going to create some reluctance from the banks as mr anthony rightly pointed out anthony that was my question to you uh what happens to the AUM growth for you for for Edel as a book? I mean, because the capital needs now to enhance the AUM are higher than what they were before. Would that impact your AUM? And what's the kind of growth that Edel ARC is making? Any which was in the first place? We don't have numbers out there as to what's the book like and what's the growth that you are projecting for that book. See, uh, the, what Edelweiss is focusing on, the, how much investment we should do in this. In fact, we had planned an investment of around 500 to 1,000 crore in this year. Effectively, what uh, I agree with Mr. Pai, the AUM growth would be restricted, but our investment, uh, what we planned was around that much. We are here to buy assets. We would invest that. Our target is to invest that much. Now, AUM growth, as, I right, as you rightly said, it would be low. But I agree with Mr. Pai on the uh, asset reconstruction aspects. Now, the asset reconstruction will really come in the in Verdans, you know, uh, really that will be the focus of ARC. In fact, Edelweiss ARC was always focused on asset reconstruction. Now, 60% of my acquisition are restructurable and revivable cases. So our, our income, basically our income, as he rightly said, it will come back and and from the upside. So that will be the more focus now. More than 60% is revivable and restructurable cases. So we look at uh, uh, recovering much more than what is the acquisition price and earn from there. I think European markets have opened. We are slightly running out of time, so I'll have to uh, be a little quick. Uh, final question to you, Mr. Anthony. What's the size of your book right now? And what's the growth path like over the next couple of years? Yeah, we are. We our book is presently uh, seventeen thousand five hundred. We have acquired uh, NPAs worth around thirty-three thousand crore, and uh, security is issued around seventeen thousand five hundred crore. Uh, we look at a growth rate of uh, our target is nearly twenty-five to thirty thousand crore of uh, asset book AUM uh, in the coming one to two years time. All right. Really good having you, both of you. Thanks so much for joining in. You've tried to make it as simple as possible, and I hope our viewers got a gist of it. We certainly did. Thanks so much for taking the time out and explaining to us this very complex subject Thank in you. much more simpler terms. Thanks for taking the time out. Well, Thank I hope you, you got Thank a gist of uh, what these new norms meant, both from a ratings perspective as well as from somebody who gets impacted as a result of this. Probably not too much of an impact at least over the long term, is what Edelweiss and both Crystal had to say. Yeah, that's a lot more clarity that we're getting on the same, but...